Welcome to D-Lab. In the Radio Shack today, we have a DX100 transmitter. It has no grid drive. I initially thought, well, maybe it's just a bad tube. Checked all that. It's good. Then, I got looking at the transmitter a little bit closer. I think I know what the problem is. Here we go. So I featured this transmitter in an earlier video and pointed out that it has a modification here. There's an added jack and an added pot. And I was like, what in the heck is that? So I got on some of the nets and I asked around and some guys said that may be an FSK keying modification for the transmitter. It used to be a popular thing. So there's the pot. And there's the wires right there. But the issue is right now is the VFO on this transmitter is not running. And let me show you what I found and it appears as though the best way to fix this is to remove the mod. So if you follow these lines down, you'll see they junction. They come over here to the CW phone switch, and then below that is the key jack. This is where you plug in the Morse code key, and it would ground it, and that key is the radio, right? So I thought, well, the VFO is not running, so maybe I should check pin 7 to ground and see if when I put in a key, I can pull this to ground and it opens. Let's check that out. 6AU6 tube from the VFO is removed, so I can get to pin 7, which is the cathode. And when I do the CW phone operation, you should see that line ground if the key is closed. In this case, the key is not installed, so it's automatically closed. So I thought, well, what the heck's going on? So then I got the bright idea, let's measure pin 7 over to this modification area, see if we got continuity. So there's pin 7. Normally, you can't see this, but it should be going over here to the key jack. That's open. Pin 7 is also open to this crazy mod. But I found that pin 6, which is a screen on the 6AU6, comes down here to this little mod area. So I'm guessing, for some reason, they were varying the screen voltage with this pot. Anyway, it's a mystery, but what I'm going to have to do is disassemble the VFO cage. Because let me show you this wiring. I'm going to have to open the cage, reverse this mod, and hopefully get the VFO to run again. So this orange and yellow wire that you see, they take off down into the chassis, down there, they swoop up into the bottom of the VFO. And that wiring is not original, it's been added. So the task at hand is to get the shield off the VFO, trace down that wiring, put her back to stock. All right, I've removed all the upper sheet metal screws. So the task is to get the shield off. Now there's some quarter inch studs going through the bottom of the chassis. I'll get those off and hopefully it'll lift right up. I've got two of the number six nuts removed. There's one more left and of course it's hidden way down there. So to get to it, I'm going to remove this coupler and pull the dry pot back and I should be able to get a nut driver in there. All right, I was able to decouple that. Got the nut off of there. Here is the added wiring I was telling you about that's swooping up from that little mod. So the next step, come around here and get the shield out of here and take a look inside. So there is the added wiring, the yellow that goes up to the 6AU6. And this orange one looks like it goes to a terminal board down there. So first step, I'm going to remove all this and then try to figure out what the stock configuration was. Right, I've got the wiring disconnected now. I'll pull this stuff out of here. Looks like I've got a couple of resistor raids here still. Get that out of the way. Getting closer. Now here's the two wires that were added. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to use a little dental mirror and do everything with that because I can't get underneath this platform. But from what I can see, these wires have simply been added. So the original switching to pin 7 is still here. 
I believe if I take my meteoroid, go to pin seven, goes down here to this terminal board. I know you can't hear it, but I can see it. So there must be something else going on that's not grounding that. So there must have been another part of this modification that I'll have to figure out. So after a little careful evaluation, I've decided the best move is to remove the entire VFO assembly. This wiring that I was looking at with my little inspection mirror, I can see it. But even if I could get in there, there's no way a soldering iron is going to make it. So I'm going to have to pull it lay it down here where I can get access and clean this wiring up. So I've got it all loose. Now it's a matter of getting it decoupled from the front, pulling it out safely without damaging this thing. So as usual, the project grows. All right, there she is, swung out. Wasn't too bad of a job. The hardest part was getting this nut loose because that was under the VFO switch. There was a cam lever underneath. That was kind of a pain, but anyway. Now I can get right in here and clean this up. Well, luckily, I've got the Heath kit manual right here so I can verify their hookup diagram against the VFO. Now, right off the bat, I see something looks completely different. You see that coil there? There's another coil above it with a couple caps, and that has that mystery yellow wire. That is not on the schematic. So that was also part of the mod. I'm going to take it out. So I still can't get that keying line on the 6AU6 to go low with the key. And then I noticed, guess what? More added wires. And this one goes to the blue lines. They're going up to the keyer. And then this one, he takes off, comes up here to the meter switch. So more wires to figure out, eliminate, and try to get her back to stock. All right, so good news. I've rewired the CW phone switch, cleaned up all that, got rid of those extra blue wires, and now when I go to phone, see there, I got my key line back, and this is going up to the 6AU6 tube, so I bet you that the 6AU6 will oscillate now. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, make sure things are lubed, especially the switch while I have access, and I'm going to get this VFO back together, because as you can see, this is kind of fragile. All right, so I've unmodded it. Fire it up here. I've got the VFO tube back in. We're in VFO position. And now we're looking for grid drive. When I put it into CW. Oh. There it is. Should be able to vary it. Yep. We have grid drive back. All right, now I need to get that VFO shield reinstalled and adjust the cam underneath that selects the different bands in the VFO. Alright, so the unmod is complete. I put some of these black hole plugs in the front where those controls used to be. Doesn't look too bad. I also had to replace these knobs because as you know, these red ones here are famous for just crumbling and they won't work anymore. And unfortunately, the hole is not quarter inch. So I actually had to drill these out, but they don't look too bad on the transmitter. Well, normally at this point, I would apply power and show you guys this thing in operation. However, when I removed the 5R4s earlier in this process, I looked down here and I could see from this pin to ground, there's been some flashover. So obviously you can see that these little terminals are very close to chassis and they're prone to do that. So I need to insulate those, and we'll show this thing operating in a future video. All right, so that's a wrap on repairing the no grid drive on the DX100 transmitter caused by a modification. You know, modifications are fine as long as you're keeping that transmitter, but when you've passed it on down the road and somebody has an issue and it's undocumented, it causes somebody a lot of time and effort to take it back to stock. So keep that in mind.